Hello everyone, it is the friendly neighborhood weasel with the fell Rax and Karnan shotgun added with the Echo of Zermon update, which of course came out today if you are not informed. This shotgun has of course an incarnate mode as every other incarnate weapon does, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you two builds, is it any good, is the incarnate mode any good, and uh, what do I think of the weapon itself. So, before we get into it, if you like my beautiful voice and you love that you see on the screen right now, a like, a comment, and a subscribe would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Now, let's show you the base stats of this weapon. So, the base stats of this weapon are pretty decent in and of itself. Magazine is 6 capacity. I'll tell you why I'm mentioning that in just a second. The multi shot is 4 pellets per 1 shell, of course. It has a reload of 3.7 seconds, which is okay. Uh, the accuracy is 7.7. Okay, still. Uh, the critical chance for the main fire mode is 20%. The multiplier 2.0. The status 5.5%. And the main IPS is slash. But puncture is following very closely. The total damage is 760. Now, this is going to be, of course, the incarnate mode. Uh, the reload is 2.0 seconds. Now, the fire rate is 1.5, which is very, very slow, and I'll show you that in just a second. The critical chance 20%, and the multiplier is a little bit better by one time, so it's 3.0 times. Status is 20%, it has innate radiation and impact as its only IPS, and a maximum damage of 500, which is lower by 260 than the primary fire mode. So, let me just show you the weapon unranked. I do not have a Smita Kavat anywhere, I'm not going to be activating any abilities, uh, and let me just show you how, it, how the weapon looks like. So, as you can see, if you're pretty close, the spread is decent. The spread is not that far. Uh, it's pretty good, and of course, let me just do that much, much better. I accidentally press my spacebar. It does reload shell by shell. I mean, reload. It basically just throws them in there, and they get reloaded by themselves. He, like, throw them, throws them to the wind, and they know what to do. As you can see, spread pretty decent. Now, the damage falloff is, is pretty, pretty bad. Uh, so, of course, it is a shotgun close range is where you're going to be, you know, aiming for. But if you are close range, as you can see, the spread is not bad at all. These shells are grouped up pretty goddamn good. Now, I'll show you the Incarnate a little bit later on. But before that, let's go into the Chrysalis and show you what the Incarnate uh, evolutions look like. Now in the chrysalis, the evolutions. Now the evolution tasks basically stay the same across all the incarnate weapons. So basically kill 100 enemies, kill 8 uh, Eximus units with the incarnate mode. Then evolution 3 is going to be deal uh, or do 20 headshots to the angel without uh, reloading. Uh, this one's actually pretty easy to do. I, it, it was glitching out for me, but uh, it, and in the end I was able to do it. Then the fourth evolution is going to be completing 12 floods or closing 12 floods. And then Evolution 5, a solo mission with three weapons equipped, uh, three incarnate weapons equipped inside of your loadout. So the first evolution will unlock your incarnate mode, which we'll show you in a second. Now, the second in evolution, I have picked Weapon Recoil Reduction. Now, I could have picked Accuracy, which I honestly think is not needed with this weapon. If you don't want to fire long range, um, I don't honestly mind this that much because the incarnate mode is pretty good and I'll show you why. Uh, and uh, the projectile speed is pretty good. So basically I will choose between weapon recoil and projectile speed. Then uh, the third evolution. I picked up a dual mode chamber. Reload uh, toggles the weapon between 100% projectile speed and 4 meters punch through. Which is very very good. And uh, now we have the auto loader of course. 50% uh, magazine reloads when holstered. So pretty cool when it's holster which i do not really like that sort of evolution but i'm not going to be using it and reload increases fire rate by 10 percent per shell resets on a reload now this one's not the best if you're not going to use a magazine in uh, increasing mod because the magazine is only six so not very good uh moving on to Number four, we have, I have uh, headshots built 50% more in Karnan Transmutation Charge. Uh, I personally didn't pick any of these other ones because I don't think you're going to need them. Racking Wraith could be pretty good. 
Uh, but that's why we're here to test this out. And evolution 5, of course, 50% chance to deal 2000 damage on non critical hits. The other two are on punch uh, through three enemies, 70% uh, sorry, ammo efficiency for 20 seconds. Uh, the default punch through is, I think, 0 0.5. What, but with the evolution 3, if you pick this one, four meters, that's going to be 4.5 meters, which then it could be useful, but ammo efficiency is eh. Pretty meh, yeah. Uh, and Agile Executor gain 50% ammo efficiency while uh, aim and sliding. So, pretty cool. Moving on, back to the simulacrum. Okay, and we are back from the chrysalis. I showed you my evolutions. Now it's time to show you the builds. Now the first build will be, of course, the 2000 non-crit build. Uh, we have Galvanized Hell, Hunter Munitions, Prime Charge Shell, Galvanized Savvy, Vigilante Armaments, Blaze, Toxic Barrage, and Shotgun Spaz, and of course, Arcane Primary Merciless. Uh, other Arcane that you could use is Primary Deadhead. Uh, this one will, of course, give you 360% damage for 24 seconds. Of course, it does attack, stack up to three times, so that will give you a total of what, 360. I'm using Primary Merciless because I love the reload speed and the ammo maximum. Now, I have Shotgun Spaz here instead of other mods because I prefer the fire rate just because the Incarn mode is very, very slow uh, and it's tedious and I can be, not be bothered with it. Hunter Munitions, I'm... I'm deciding if I should change out for something else, but I'm not sure. For now, it seems to be working pretty good. Of course, my primary or my prime to charge shell is not maxed out, so a little bit less corrosive uh, than I would like to, but nonetheless, it is pretty good. And of course, blades for 60% damage and 60% heat is very, very good. Now, as you can see, I did say earlier that the puncture is quite close. Sadly, there isn't a mod to give me more slash. I mean, there is, but I would love something like Carnus Mandible to have on here. Other than that, I'm not going to be putting any any sort of mods on here like Shredder or, or other slash mods because I could instead of the Shotgun Spaz, but I love myself the fire rate. So we have in total, we have Heat and Corrosive, which is pretty good, reducing enemy armor and again, reducing enemy armor. Um... And of course, here in our incarnate mode, we have heat, impact, radiation, and corrosive. So, let me show you how this build works out. We are summoning level 170 corrupted heavy gunners. No abilities will be used, as I said. Uh, and I'm going to be just demonstrating how the dual chamber works. So, currently, uh, next to my shields, you will see a little, like I guess, shotgun shell with 100% projectile speed. Now, every shell is counted as a different buff. So, six shells. So if I spend my f sixth shell, I, if I reload, I will get the puncture proc or the punch through proc. So I will punch through four meters. As you can see, there you go. And that's how it works. So I have I wasted four now. So it's going to switch, uh, as you can see, and it's going to end up back on to the uh, punch through. If I put off, uh, I guess, an uneven amount, so like three, then it's going to reload. And it's going to end up on the uh, projectile speed. I do love having myself projectile speed. That's why I picked, of course, the buff. And, of course, as I said, it is a shell-by-shell -shell reload. So, you can basically switch this out for anything. Uh, now, when you switch to your incarnate mode, which I'll show you right now. Uh, the buff that you get, so, of course, the 100%... Uh, projectile speed or punch through will be carried on to the incarnate weapon and of course honestly i think on the incarnate form you do not need projectile speed i would just love to have the punch through so of course getting headshots will increase your incarnate mode and the incarnate weapons is going to be an akimbo pistol and as you can see it does look like it has a blast radius you might be thinking oh my god is this another aoe weapon sadly no, it is not. It does have punch through, of course, because of the dual chamber, but it doesn't have any blast. So as you can see, if I aim it like literally right there, now he died because of the fire proc. But if I aim it literally right next to him, as you can see, I'm aiming like right here at his foot. There is no, no blast radius. So it is a, just a projectile weapon. Now, I do have to say that in sort of 80% of the situations, I prefer the default firing mode instead of the incarnate form. So, as you can see, it is pretty good. I'm not saying it's bad. It can, As you can see, it's cleaning these enemies out without any issue. A negative critical chance 
would be very, very good. A Riven, of course. A negative critical chance Riven would be very, very good on this weapon. Uh, just for the sake of the video, I will be showing you how it looks like with projectile speed. So as you can see, pretty good. Uh, but it doesn't really benefit that much. Now that's that shotgun spaz working and of course the arcane merciless. Uh, working there. Well, mostly shotgun spaz because uh, the primary arc and merciless just increases your increases your reload. So, uh, but with the incarnate weapon, of course, when it's an incarnate form, you do not have any ammo. So, that doesn't really do anything. So, that's why maybe primary deadhead would be a little bit better uh, in that situation. So, there you go. That was that build. Now, I'm going to be showing you the second build, but I'm going to be changing out some Incarnan uh, evolution trees, and I'll show you which ones when I get there. Okay, so for the second build, we have a critical build if you want to be a little bit of a hipster. And the Incarnan uh, modifications that we changed out is basically just the fourth evolution, 10% critical chance and 10% status chance. Now, Evolution 5 will be staying the same because 50% chance to deal 2000 damage on non-critical hits is pretty good because of course you're going to be proccing critical hits only 60% of the time. So the build looks like this. We have Prime Ravage, Galvanized Hell, Prime Charge Shell, Galvanized Savvy, Blaze, Toxic Barrage, Hunter Munitions and Critical Declaration and of course Primary Merciless. Now, I forgot to say, putting Galvanized Acceleration inside of the uh, Auxiliary slot will be very good in the first and second build. I just don't have it, sadly, and uh, of course I'm going to have to mod it anyway for that, so I'm going to be getting that, and you're basically going to be getting the dual chamber, I guess, projectile speed buff anyway, so basically just stick with the 4 meters punch through because it is much, much better, and you're going to not need any projectile speed. So, basically, this is a critical build, now we will see how it differs, the... Uh, critical multiplier and critical chance uh, is 60% for the critical chance and 4.3 and 6.2 or 6.3 of course on the mode itself corresponding to of course default mode and then uh, of course the incarnate mode. So as you can see we're basically proccing crits everywhere but there's always a chance on a non-critical hit that you will be able to proc yourself that 2000 damage. So, as you can see, right here, we do not have a gal uh, shotgun spaz on here. So, as you can see, the fire rate is much, much slower. Uh, but, as you can see, we're killing these enemies really, really good. This build is not as bad as you might think. Of course, critical chance is never going to be bad. Uh, but, of course, this weapon is built that way. So, that you, if you get a non-critical hit... 2000% damage is really, really good. Of course, if you don't aim for the head, you're not going to be killing everything instantly. But uh, it is nonetheless a decent enough build. Now, Warframes that increase your fire rate are going to be pretty good. So, Goss would be very, very good here. And, of course, uh, Wisp. Let me just uh, quickly equip Goss and show you how that's going to look like. Well, let me just find it. Where's my boy Goss? Uh, he is somewhere around here, but I cannot seem to find him in the, in the situation where I need him. I can't really find him. Uh, so let me summon the enemies again. Increase that. Just run real fast so I can get my thing above the red line. And just run around a little bit more. There you go. We're 84%. As you can see, the reload is blazing fast, fast, fast. And now let's go to the incarnate mode. The fire rate doesn't really change a lot here because it's not as noticeable, I think, as the primary one is. Uh, but nonetheless, it is very, very good. As you can see, there you go. We debuff war off, and we killed everything. Well, almost everything. This one guy's left. There you go. He is dead. So, basically, that is my two builds for the uh, Fel... I actually already forgot the weapon's name. The Felrax. Uh, I personally think it is a very decent weapon. I don't really think it's Fenmore levels of good, for example, for primaries, that is. Uh, but nonetheless, it is a very, very decent and fun weapon. The 
primary way of firing I would say is a bit better than the incarnate form. I'm a bit disappointed with the incarnate form, but it can be quite, quite useful. So, nonetheless, this has been the Felorax. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, leave a like, a comment, and do subscribe for more. And I will see you guys on the next one. This has been the Gaming Weasel, over and out.